Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Club football is on the horizon. It does return this weekend, the return of the Scottish Premiership after a fairly long international break, uh, which is pretty welcomed here on the channel. I do love club football and I love the fact that it's returning. So I decided to do a video to get the club football juices flowing again and basically rank every club Scottish Premiership season so far. So obviously from the start of the season to that last international break, I'm going to give each team a grade, basically like school, on how good they were. So an A star would be the best possible grade you could get and an F would be the worst possible grade you could get. Uh, so without further ado guys, let's get straight into the video. Okay, kicking us off is Aberdeen. Now, Aberdeen for me are a funny one. A lot of people were overhyping Aberdeen at the start of the season. A lot of people saying, you know, they would finish third, they would even go on to finish second this season. I wasn't buying it really. I, I don't know why, but I just wasn't. Um, however, I did predict them to finish fourth and they currently sit ninth. Uh, they've been really, really bad this season. So far, they've played eight games. They've won two, they've drawn two and they've lost four. They also had a really, really upsetting League Cup exit to Rafe Rovers and obviously went out the Europa Conference League against Carabags. So I'm really struggling to find positives so far in Aberdeen season. Maybe the fact that they're not bottom. They've, they've, they've won two games. Fair play to them. But yeah, it's been really, really poor from Aberdeen. And what Derek McGuinness did over those eight years, you know, finished them second. I know fans wanted something different, but... You know, this is uh, a, bit, a bit of a bad change. And Stephen Glass, you know, if things carry on this way, January, February, he could be one of the first managers to be dismissed. Look, yeah, it's been a bad, bad uh, season so far for Aberdeen. They'll be looking to pick up in the run into Christmas. But I've got to give them a ranking of F. It's been a massive fail from Aberdeen. And uh, yeah, that's what I can give them. Okay, moving on to our next club, another club with a new manager, that of course being Celtic. And last season was a bit of a catastrophe for Celtic on and off the field, obviously going for 10 in a row. However, that didn't materialise and Neil Lennon was shortly dismissed soon after. This summer has been a bit of a rebuild under the new manager Ange Postagoglu, but it's still Celtic and Celtic are expected to be winning titles and so far this season it hasn't been good enough. They currently sit 6th in the Scottish Premiership having played 8 games, lost 3, drawn 1 and won 4. There is some positives, as I said, new signings, you know, coming through the door. Kiago Furuhashi looking like a real good threat. Callum McGregor growing into that captain's armband. But as I said, it hasn't been good enough for Celtic. Domestically and in Europe, it's, it's just not been good enough. I'm going to give Celtic a positive that the fact they got to the Europa League group stage because at a certain point in the season after they got knocked out to Michelin and lost the opening game against Hearts, a lot of Celtic fans, a lot of fans around Scottish football didn't think it would be possible for them to beat AZ Alkma. So that is a positive. And they are at Hamden next next month after making it to the League Cup semi-final. So those, I suppose, are a good few positives. But, look, it's not been good enough for Celtic by any means. Sixth in the league, losing to Livingston, losing to Hearts, losing to Rangers and drawing to Dundee United is not good enough. So for that reason, I'm going to be giving Celtic a D. Our next club is Premiership New Boys Dundee and despite what everyone was telling me at the start of the season I had high hopes for them a lot of people were telling me they were going straight back down there but I did believe in Dundee and what they were doing because I know how hard it is to get out the Scottish second tier uh, and they got up through the Premiership playoff and you know recruited well you know bringing Lee Griffiths he's a good goal scorer Jason Cummings uh, they've got Charlie Adam in that midfield as well but he has been injured so maybe they might kick on when he comes back in into it but so far this season it has been a bit of a disaster they've played eight games they've won zero they've drawn three and lost five and including the all-important Dundee derby so I can't and I won't give Dundee anything higher than an F they are getting a F it's been a failure to start of life here in the premiership but look I'm hoping you can kick on Dundee but for now you're getting an F Okay, literally moving across the road to Dundee United. And Dundee United have actually had a good start to the season. They've played eight games. They've won four. They've drawn two and lost two. They currently sit fifth in the Scottish Premiership. Five points 
behind Rangers and also only one point behind third place Hibernian. Yes, they've had a really, really good start. They won the Dundee derby. They also ended Rangers unbeaten run and they also got a draw at Parkhead at Celtic. They've played some tough, tough opposition so far in these opening games, including Hearts, Aberdeen, Rangers, Celtic. They've played them all and they're currently sitting fifth in the league. So fair play to Dundee United. I am giving you guys a C. It's, I'm, I'm giving you a good C. I'm going to give you a C plus. A good C. Um, it's been a really, really good start to the season. My only criticism, I suppose, is you could have probably done a bit better in the cup. Um, but apart from that, look, it's a solid start from Dundee United. And I'm interested to see how they crack on towards the next part of the season. Okay, moving on to our next side, that being Hearts of Midlovian, and a lot of people may have forgot that they just came up from the championship. That's how good their start of the season has been. Hearts were playing the championship last year and now are undefeated in the Scottish Premiership. Yeah, that's right. They've played eight games. They've won five. They've drawn three and lost zero. They've beat teams like Celtic. They beat Dundee United, a team that I hyped up earlier on. They have a really good start also. They beat Motherwell, another team who've had a really, really good start. They beat Aberdeen. They are doing so, so well, Hearts, so far. And for that reason, I'm going to give them an A-. minus. People may ask why I'm not giving them an A-. positive. They're not top of the league. They're second in the league, a point behind from top. It's not a perfect start because they would be top of the league despite being undefeated. Rangers this Saturday is going to be another massive test for them at Ibrox. I'm interested to see how far this heart side can take this and how far of a run or a title push they can make it or even challenge for those Champions League spots. But a real, real solid start from Hearts and Midlovian. They are getting an A-. minus. Okay, moving on to the other side of the city, to Hibernian, and Hibs have also had a really, really good start to the season. They currently sit third in the league. They've played eight games. They've won four, drawn three, and lost one. Their defeat and their first defeat coming on match day eight, just before the international break to Rangers. And, you know, some would say that, you know, if Ryan Porteous didn't get sent off early on, they maybe could have went on to beat Rangers. But, you know, if your nan had balls, then should be your granddad. But... It is what it is. They lost that game, but they have had a good start to the season. Also getting to the League Cup semi-final as well, uh, which is a great achievement. They're going to be playing Celtic next month. So we'll see how far they can take that. But my only negatives I'd really give Hibernian is, of course, losing that game to Rangers. But the Europa Conference League, I didn't like the... I've really hyped up Hibs. I thought they had a really good team. I felt like they could have progressed to the group stages or at least to the playoff round, but they didn't. It was very underwhelming, the whole performance throughout Europe. And uh, yeah, that kind of marked them down a bit but look either way they are in good standing so far they are third in the league they're in the league cup semi-final i'm going to give them a b i'm going to give them a b and a nice b as well um but yeah good start from hibernian is a b from me Okay, now moving on to Livingston. And Livingston last year really did overachieve. They had a good season. There at one point, people were talking about them to, to finish third and in that fight for the European spots. They also got to a final and, and David Martindale was almost talked about like a godlike figure in Scottish football. He was having a really, really good season with Livingston. But so far this season, it hasn't been good enough really, even for them and their budget. They've lost the most games in the division, losing six out of a possible eight and drawing one game and winning one game and this is what keeps them off the bottom of the Scottish Premiership and avoids them getting an F. They beat Celtic which is a really really good achievement in itself but yeah they managed to get three points against them and that is the only positive I'd say uh, so far for their season so that stops them from getting an F from me and they get an E. Cast your minds back to the start of the season when I did the Scottish Premiership prediction video. I said that Motherwell would struggle. I thought I was being smart. You know, I've, I looked into the recruitment uh, at what they did and I said that they would find out their fate in a Premiership playoff after finishing 11th in the season. However, so far this season, they've done really, really well and they exceeded my expectations. They've uh, went on a really good run of results and including a draw at Ibrox, which is not very easy to get these days. They've played eight games. They've won four. They've drawn two and lost two and have a similar form to that of Dundee United to having spent less money than them. And I'm going to give them a B for that. It's a really, really good start. Um, and I'm interested to see how they kick on from here. And I do not think that they will go down now. I think they've got enough quality there with Tony Watt as well, just putting goals away. A lot of talk about him getting a uh, Scotland call up as well, by the way. Um, whether he does or not, it will be remains to be seen. But yeah, a really, really good start from Motherwell. And I'm going to give them a solid B. 
Now we move on to last season's Invincible Champions. Yes, cast your mind back to last season where Rangers lifted the Scottish Premiership trophy, stopping Celtic from doing 10 in a row and doing it in a beautiful fashion, you know, going the whole campaign unbeaten, which has only happened four times in Scottish football. But are they a victim of their own success? Last season, you know, the, the performance levels were so, so high and so far this season, the actual performance levels in general just haven't been the same. You ask a lot of Rangers fans or people who watch Rangers games so far this season, they just don't look that great, but they are grinding out results. And Rangers are still top of the division. They have played eight games, they've won six, they've drawn one and lost only one. So yeah, a good start from Rangers domestically and do find themselves in a League Cup semi-final as well. So in terms of that, it has been great, but the performance levels haven't been as good. But are they a victim of their success from last season? Having said their positives, you know, there were some negatives as well in terms of the Champions League exit against Malmo. That wasn't good enough from Rangers uh, going out to Malmo. And also so far in the Europa League, I think we've been... Uh, we've got a high expectation of Rangers in the Europa League, especially under Gerrard. And, you know, the group performances, losing their two opening games, haven't been good enough either. Um, so I have to mark them down for that. I mean, it is a fairly solid start to the season. And to put it into perspective as well, we are putting all these rankings into perspective. I know they're top of the league, but they're only getting a B from me. You know, they're, they're there. They're kind of just passing by. They're that, like, student that just kind of hovers by and does everything. They're meeting the criteria that they need to do, but they have haven't really gone up the gears yet and uh, shown their high level performances in Europe and uh, putting teams to the sword but I think that will come but so far they're going to get a B from me. Moving to Dingwall to Ross County and I actually am a big fan of Ross County actually I do like Ross County I like a good Highland team being in the uh, the top tier of Scottish football but they're in the same sort of bracket as Dundee they are winless as well and they're only off the bottom shelf by a measly one goal they're mirroring Dundee's form they have both won zero they've drawn three and lost five and for that reason I can't give them anything higher than an F it's been a failure uh, of a start in terms of the season their goal and aspiration as Ross County Football Club is to stay in the Premiership and at things stand they're not doing well they're not doing enough to um, to show that they're going to be staying up this season a lot of people did put them as favourites to go down um, and you know they need to they need to start picking up some wins or at least draws and you know grinding and getting things away but they haven't done that so far this season um, so they need to start picking up results fairly fairly soon but yeah for that Ross County are getting an F Now on to Perth, to St. Johnston, uh, the team that won the Cup double last season, won the League Cup and the Scottish Cup. And that team and that achievement and that success will live in the folklore of Perth for the rest of time. Due to that success, they earned the right to play Galatasaray in the Europa League qualifying round three and did really, really well despite people giving them no chance. They went to Istanbul and got a draw um, and uh, went to McDermott Park, then did lose the, the return leg. They dropped down into the Europa Conference League and again put up another big fight against a European regular, that being Lask. They got a draw in Austria and obviously then went out of the competition at McDermott Park after. But for St. Johnston, nobody expected them to get to the group stages of the competition and certainly didn't have the squad to combat the league and uh, Europe like Rangers and Celtic do and due to that their uh, league performances kind of dipped and they picked up poor results and so far this season yes that European run was was quite magical it's quite good they did well in that but their league performances haven't been that good however since you know they're not juggling the European games and all those other games performances and results are starting to come their way and they're starting to pick them up they've played eight games like everybody else won two drawn three and lost three uh, but yeah, the league position isn't great and that's the negative that I would give them. However, they still are in the League Cup semi-final and I think St. Johnston will now kick on. But I just can't give them anything higher than a C just due to their league position at the moment. But yeah, St. Johnston get a solid C and yeah, big shout out to St. Johnston. You did Scottish football proud in those European games. 
Now on to our last side, that being St Mirren. And for St Mirren, for me, achievement and success for them is just staying in the Scottish Premiership and maybe trying to push up the pecking order in terms of the league table. And so far this season, that's what they're doing. They've won two, they've drawn four and lost two. And uh, yeah, they're just plodding along middle of the road. And for that reason, I'm going to give them a middle of the road grade, which is a C. I don't expect too much from St Mirren, um, but you know, they're a great, I think they're a great little side and I don't think they'll have any problems in terms of staying up in the division this year. That now brings us to the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed a different spin. I suppose if you did enjoy it, guys, please do hit the like button. And come the next international break, I'll do another rankings. Or at the Christmas break, I'll do another rankings uh, where we can take a look at the club's uh, progress from here and give them a previous grade and, and then their new grade. Whether you want to see that, uh, let me know down in the comment section. If not, just smash that like button, guys, and subscribe to the channel for more Scottish football content. I'll see you all in the next video.